Today, as part of my eight short course and desert truck roundup, I want to look at the very cheapest one-tenth scale option available. Let me show you what we've got. If you like the idea of buying two of these instead of one of these, then you might want to watch this video. It's the DRC9201E. It's a 110 scale four-wheel drive short course truck. It's a brushed unit. Here's the size difference between one of my many 110 scale short course trucks. <laughs> I think you might reasonably call this a 112 scale. They call it a 110, but look, scale isn't everything. In fact, let me show you something. All right, DRC aren't necessarily the bad guys here because the Mojave 4S is what Armour calls a 1.8 scale. The Losi Baja Ray 2.0 and the HPR Jumpshot V2 here, they're both 1.10 scale. DRC calls this fella a 1.10 scale as well. Now clearly, they're not the same, right? But if that can be a 1.8 scale next to these 1.10 scales, then we can kind of let it go. I think we're just going to have to accept that scale isn't always going to be accurate, even with the big dollar items. I mean, this is one eighth and one tenth. Now I'm not going to kick up a stink and say, look, these guys are actually almost exactly the same size. Eh, I mean, look, it's just a toy at the end of the day. Let's not get our knickers in a knot. It says it's one tenth. I think it's one twelfth. Doesn't really matter. You can see how big it is. That's enough on that. Okay, so look, I started talking about this thing uh, by referring to its scale and how it's actually quite small and how it's 1 12th size. But unlike my recent video about the Traxxas slash 4x4 VXL, I had a few criticisms about what is actually a fine car, but it's so much more expensive than the other cars, your expectations kind of go higher. This thing is about $100 and even less with a coupon and I'll stick the code and the link to this thing down below because DRC sent me this, uh, they approached me and I said sure, look send me this because I'm doing a roundup of short course trucks so great timing. Where this thing is a quarter of the price of the Slash and even just a bit less than half the price of the Jump Shot which was previously my cheapest short course truck here, I think there's actually a lot more room for forgiveness of uh, things that maybe aren't quite perfect. I'm not going to expect an awful lot from a car that costs so little. But I still expect something. Particularly, I want to look at the claims of what they've made, and let's just see if this thing meets their claims. One thing I'll start by saying is they're not making some hefty claim of maximum speed, some huge top speed. So that's already a good start, because I like to see uh, a company building something to spec. I am going to have a few things to pick on. For example, out of the box, you can't even steer very far without it impacting the body. That's, that's a problem. The car still needs to do some basic stuff. It needs to drive, it needs to steer without grinding away, it needs to be reasonably stable. I mean, we've got a four-wheel drive short course truck here, so it needs to be able to drive on a short course in four-wheel drive and, you know, survive a few batteries. So we'll take this out for a drive after that and we'll see if it's worth your hard-earned or if maybe it's a better idea to save your money and buy something a little bit closer to hobby grade. Let's take a look at it. So this is what you get in the box. There's a little charger, two 1500 milliamp hour batteries. That's two 18650 batteries. They're gonna be okay. Remember, it's a brushless system. It's gonna give you, I don't know, 15 minutes of runtime on that. It says in the manual it takes 180 minutes to charge those and the charger charges at uh, one and a half amp, uh, sorry, at one amp. So it should only take about 90 minutes to charge these, but yeah, anyway, basic radio. Feels a bit toyish, but the wheel feels okay. Uh, it takes three double A's, I think. Yeah, three double A's. And you have steering trim and speed. It says speed switch. I'm guessing that's your, that's gotta be something like a dual rate for speed, I suppose you can limit it. And that really is it. That tells me we're not going to be able to limit the steering. That also tells me probably that this may not be a standard servo. The shocks can take oil, but if I can treat this car like a basketball, that just tells you that there's no oil in these shocks. I don't know what the seals will be like, but that's worth keeping in mind. Now, interestingly, although this is small, it's actually kind of heavy. It weighs uh, 1.75 kilograms, which is pounds. 
the HPR jump shot is 2.15 kilos, so it's only 400 grams more than this thing, and yet this is so much smaller. Let's find out where the weight is. For a start, there's a lot in the body. There's a, there's a full-size wheel on the back of this body here, and it actually makes it bend. I'm inclined to remove that because, although it looks good, it's really heavy, and that's going to hurt your performance. Standard-looking short course design. There's not much to it. It's a shaft driven. You've got a diff in the rear, diff in the front. Uh, dog bones on the inside and CVDs on the outside at the front and on the rear as well, which is unusual. In a car like this, often you have uh, dog bones at each end in the rear and uh, just CVDs on the outside at the front because they've got to be able to steer. The steering angle is interesting actually. It doesn't go very far that way. And this way, uh, the steering arm actually is impacted by this thing. Could it go further without it? Don't know. No, I don't think so. For a hundred bucks or less, depending on what their discount size is, we're not expecting the world. What we're looking for here is not high-end anything. We're just looking for basic durability and basic function. There are Phillips head screws throughout. There's not a hex screw in sight. That also tells me there's likely to be self-tapping screws rather than uh, machine level stuff in any of this. You do have lights in the front, in the bumper here. Uh, and they plug in to the all-in-one speed controller receiver. And there's also a port next to that for these roof lights, which are functional. You just got to plug them in each time with the wire underneath. Most servos have three wires. You get power and ground and signal to a modern servo. And it's got a little control board inside it. Now these five wire servos are actually much more basic than that. The motor gets the signal from this, this unit here that tells the motor which direction to spin. So you still get proportional steering, but it's a lot more basic. And the problem with that is if this dies, which, you know, it could, particularly if it's plastic gears, I don't know if that's the case, but if this thing dies, replacing it, uh, you have less options. One nice thing about the modern trend of all-in-one ESCs and receivers is that it keeps the cost down. So you end up with a car that really costs less than 100 bucks that still gives you a four-wheel drive and a couple of batteries and a charger. If you think about it from that point of view, the value's never been better in the hobby. It's never been better. What I want from this machine though is for it to still be good enough to justify the undertaking because it's no good getting something that ticks all the boxes on paper but then breaks on the first drive or is, uh, you know, not performing like it should, even at some basic level. My first concern is that when you steer with the wheels, they're hitting the body. The only other thing that jumped out to me at the start here is that the shocks look pretty good. They've got uh, this alloy cap that not even the $400 Traxxas has, which speaks to the body hopefully not tearing out, which is, which is great. I mean, that's better than the $400 US dollar Traxxas. But without oil, this thing's gonna be bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. And also these thumb screws are already turned all the way back. Nice that they're adjustable, but the springs are way too stiff. They're way too stiff. It really wants uh, less stiff springs. They're just, they're super hard. So when we drive this in a bit, on the bumpy stuff, you're gonna hear it going, down, 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 as it bounces on the ground. What he said, because it's, it's just, there's too much bouncing and without oil in there, it's just, it's gonna be difficult to have stability. I've got this 1500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery it came with battery compartment is under a little latch. I don't have it right here, but there's a, a LiPo size battery that's 1800 milliamp hours, about this size. That'll fit and it'll give you better run time, but we're gonna run with this for today because that's the review. I don't know how many turns the motor is. I'm gonna take a stab at it probably being something like 12. It won't be too few turns. It won't be too powerful because the lower the turns, the faster the motor, the higher the draw from the all-in-one unit here. It says 45 amps. Don't know that I believe that, but let's give this thing a chance. No adjustable toe, no adjustable camber front and rear. The tires are bead locked on from one position inside on like the, the inside part of the wheel. That's interesting. Often at this price point, you'll get glued tires. That's not bad. There are no foams. They're not vented, but the rubber's reasonably soft. I mean, these should actually hook up okay. I see a metal plate here, it's only thin. This is uh, 
to reinforce the front part of the car because that's a point that's going to snap if you're unlucky, particularly on a big landing on the, on the front or over something that lands like that. This is just reinforcing. There's also a reinforcing bar across the top. Gearboxes are all enclosed. The Nerf bar on the rear is quite good. The plastic's all like nice and bendy. And all the screws are done up, which is another point over the Traxxas from the other day, the 400 US dollar Traxxas, uh, everything's tight. Right, let's, uh, let's see what it's like with, with some power. So we'll turn that on. If you're wondering, this won't take 3S. I mean, it might take 3S once. Okay, so the battery is plugged in. I've got the wires coming out on this side, away from the drive shaft, which is underneath. So we'll press it down on the second hole. That's in, and it's, it's not coming out. So I like that, that's actually quite good. Power is here. It has sufficient power, that's quite good. Oi, oi, oi. Oh yeah, so you get forward, brake, and reverse. Just gotta plug the uh, spotties in. Ah, it's really tiny and hard to get to. Is it on? Yeah, the lights are on, look at that. That's a lot of weight. Now let's just see if I'm wrong. I'd love to be wrong. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. You'll need to do this too. You can either raise the body or you can just take some, uh, take some material off it. We're just going to remove some material. I'm going to go up to where the uh, carbon meets the yellow and we'll just round it out at the bottom here so it looks alright. I'm using Lexan body scissors here, being curved, it makes it a lot easier. I'll link to a pair of them in the description as well, if you need some. And we went from just at the front, we went from where it bends. And we went straight up to where the carbon ends on the yellow. And we just put a little bend in it. Not quite the same bend, sorry car. There we go. Now let's let's have a look at that. Is that better? There we go. It touches just a little bit, just a shade on this side. I didn't quite get the get the shape right. Yeah, being curved that made made that really easy. There we go. So now we have clearance and. I only had to take off about that much on each side. And, you know, you still wouldn't really know to look at it. It looks all right. Right. Oh, it's so bouncy. Look at this. Deary me. Oh, we really need to get rid of that, that rear wheel. Right, let's drive. Okay, let's see how it hooks up. Full battery. Oh, good. You know, one thing I didn't mention was, this is something of a, what you'd call a monster short course. Some people build these where you take uh, monster truck wheels and put it onto your short course truck. This thing isn't fast, but look, it is fun. All right, let's uh, get it acquainted with low G. Hmm, jumps well enough. The gearing's about right for what it is, honestly. You can see there's no oil. See how it's just bouncing around. This is more of a kid test. What kind of abuse will it handle? Well, look, it can't go fast enough to really get itself in trouble. I've had to check a couple of times. Is our speed switch at maximum? It is. Let's just see what happens when you turn it down. Now it's turned right down. That's the top speed and turned right up. Now it also said on a sticker, if you got the speed switch turned right down, there's, it said no reverse, there's a little bit of reverse. It's not unusual to have less power in reverse than forward, that's actually quite normal. All right, well I think we've seen enough, let's get it onto the track. Okay, let's give this thing a punt around the course. It's not gonna be a fast drive. One nice thing also about these monster truck tires underneath the short course truck is the stability. There's, now this is max speed by the way. There's just so much traction.
This size is actually fine for my little backyard course, but the problem here with this car is speed. It doesn't really have any. Jumps nicely. I'll just put it the other way, because this jump going the other way is actually quite nasty. It tends to make cars nose dive to the point of uh, crashing and cartwheeling. And this thing took it all right. I think if we took that tire off the back, uh, that actually would make it nose dive more. It jumps pretty nicely as it is. And I think it gives the car balance that it may not actually have otherwise. Yeah, the problem with uh, running like this is that your throttle's pretty much pinned the whole time. But for what it is, for the money they ask, there's a lot of car here. Is there enough car to justify the purchase? Yeah, I think so. Should you upgrade this to brushless or more power? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Uh, what works at this speed and is durable at this speed? I suspect probably won't and wouldn't be at more power. But for keeping it stock, yeah is good enough. DRC 9201E It's good enough. What am I doing? Little thing I forgot to mention, it comes with a brush but there was a bunch of scum all around the bottom of each of the shocks, all of them. So maybe there was like a basic amount of some kind of low viscosity oil rather. Um, it seemed to come out. All right, gonna put a 1800 milliamp hour lipo in. We've got a bit of oil in the shocks now, but they're, I don't know if they're going to hold the oil or not. And I've taken all the weight off the body, the lights and the rear tire. It weighs a lot less now. Let's see how that drives. And if it's any faster on LiPo, because I have a sneaking suspicion it might just be. It was also a bit of a hack job, but I just cut out some rear pieces to let air exit to help stop the thing ballooning. Not that it's going to matter with a smaller car like this, but it will help the aero. Oh, this is much better. So, the shocks are the same. Wheels are the same, motor and gearing's the same. It weighs less, and that weight, the center of gravity is now lower because we took that heavy wheel off the back. Also, cutting those holes in the rear window there, you see that? The idea is that it helps air escape so you don't get the parachuting effect that short course truck bodies are known for. And in fact, some of the racing bodies they have names like uh, Flow Tech and Aero and High Flow because they let air out the back of the body at the top there, right where I've cut those windows, which helps prevent parachuting, which keeps your front end up higher than you want. Look at that. So it's still bouncy and really what it wants is better shocks. But now that we've made those little changes, literally just adding a small uh, LiPo, 2S LiPo battery, I'll stick a link in the description for one. That and removing the weight off the top of the body. That's actually, I'd say, improved performance by maybe 20%. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it was kind of boring on the track before. It's now just got enough pep in its step to actually be fun. And I'm so glad to say that, because it really needed it. <laughs> this is good enough now with LiPo for me to say, yeah, grab one. I wasn't, I was a little unsure before, I could make a case for kids, but maybe not grown-ups, but now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is actually fun. I'm liking it. I think we need a new outro. DRC 9201E. Aw, oh, yeah.